I tell people all the time, it is not just us that suffer from that suffers from the oppression and the racism and the sexism. It begins to spread to other communities. So whenever they target us and target our communities, other people are impacted by it. So funky. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Small Doses Podcast. Today I'm in the studio alone, but we have someone via satellite technology. And, you know, this person is via satellite because this person is on the move. This person is fighting for the rights of people. This person is a social a social justice advocate. This person is an organizer, an activist, an on-the-grounder, et cetera. I'm talking about none other than Tamika D. Mallory. Hey, 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 hey. First of all, I'm having all the FOMO that I'm not there with you. <laughs> I want to be on the couch with the pink and the, thing, and the You know what's fluffy. funny is I was I was like, you know, I could wait for like if she happens to turn up out here. But I was like, we'll just do a part two. Yeah. I love we'll that. So that means I can still visit. Yeah. That's yes, good. absolutely. That's good. That's um, good. To me, to me, to me. First of all, let me just say this. I feel like um, whenever we talk, like whenever we like have this, our like, side like text chats it makes me feel like like it's a malcolm and maya chit chat happening mm. like it, it feel i i be feeling like i'm talking to the person who does the thing <laughs> i'm talking to the person who does the things and you know i think a lot of people don't really understand the true breadth of mm. the work that you do Mm -hmm. And we called this episode side of folks of side effects of what side of folks side effects of woke, because I think that we as we have seen the word woke become co-opted by these devils and, uh, you know, the all the above. What we also have seen is people also not continue to understand that, like, there is actual action that is attached to what it means to be woke. Absolutely. Right. And Absolutely. that even though they've taken the meaning of the word, like the action behind that has not changed. So I wanted to talk first about just like what you consider that word to mean and how that comes out in the actual action based work that you do. Well, first of all, let me say that I love the show and I love you. Um, I love you as my dear sister. And it's important to have brilliant people around you as you try to be a leader or active in any space, right? Because those text chats that you're talking about, I'm on text chats with Charlemagne, I'm on text chat with you with this one, that one. I mean, the, the list goes on. It's a place where I get to dump out what I'm feeling. And sometimes I call you and we're crying together, like <laughs> frustration and all of that. Yes. And it helps me to get focused so I can go back and actually do the work. And right. I just want to say to you publicly that people may not know it because they don't see us like hanging out together, <laughs> how important it's been for the last several years. It hasn't just been a year or, or you know, a few months. It's been, it's been the been last time. several years, several elections, several unfortunate murders, trauma yeah. that I've been able to rely on you for critical thinking, pushback. Um, and also for sisterhood to help me through some really big emotional times. And I agree with you that, it, these text messages will be history. Like one day, somebody is going to have, and sometimes I have to be careful about that. I know. <laughs> I, I forget. Like I do. I, I literally forget sometimes who I am and what my voice means in the world because I'm just me. Like I figure I'm just yes. Mika. And so then I'm like, well, you can't say all the motherfuckers in this text not knowing if somehow this is going to end up like, you know, in yep. a CBS special. And I'm out here talking about my fuck this, that, this, this, this. you know. <laughs> so on I'm April cool. 18th, 2022, <laughs> you told Amanda Seals, these motherfuckers, <laughs> who are the these? And some others. <laughs> so anyway, but some people will protect me. Others will absolutely post it and put it out there. But anyway, woke, man. Wow, I've been woke so long. My parents was woke. My granddaddy was woke. Everybody was woke, right? And so I don't know. For me, it's just it's just a 
a natural thing that I feel like, um, you know, most of us, even those who don't want to do anything with it, have a sense of wokeness. Like they are aware. And that's what it means. It means to be aware. But I think that the purpose of the use of the word woke at this point, and I'm not talking about the colonizers, you know, trying to take the word and change it. I'm talking about the origins of it meant know it and didn't do something about it, right? Like being woke means you know, now you got to do. Because once you see, you can't unsee. So that's what it means for me. When I say, when I talk about wokeness or when I when I proclaim my own wokeness, it doesn't just mean being aware. It means there's a step that's beyond that. Um, and whether that's to find an organization and say, you know what, I'm going to give my money, I'm going to give my time, whether it's posting and sharing a thing, um, whether it's just having serious conversations with my family members and friends that might make people uncomfortable but just having the dialogue so that people are not just in the know, but that they're in the know how. Right. Um, so that's what wokeness means to me. And to watch others, you know, everything that we have is, has been stolen everything. Right. So we know that from our culture um, to everything and any and everything, our stories, um, our lifestyle, everything about us has been stolen by people who one are just jealous and mad. They're just haters. Like there's a lot of people out here that are literally haters and they can't stand that we create language and again, culture that is our own. They, they can't stand it. They cannot stand that even through our pain, we find a song or a word or a phrase or a look. They can't take it. And so oftentimes they steal it to try to dismantle it so that it doesn't have the same life, um, you know, to in that and that breath as you talked about to give to our youth and and their youth, and that's a whole other conversation because I think a lot of times what we're seeing in this moment is not the fear of us being woke; it's the fear of their own becoming aware of what the history, not just of Africans in America, but the history of America and what it has done to so many people. So, you know, when I see it being stolen, it's like oh, typical, um, but, you know, just like everything else, no matter how they try to steal the hair, the, the cornrows, we do it better. Whatever, yeah. the, the food, we just do it better. I just get scared that people feel, I, I really think that people don't feel like things could get worse. Mm, mm hmm mm hmm Mm -hmm. I really, I watch the work that you do and I, pe I feel like people watch the work that you do and they're like, I'm glad she's doing work, <laughs> you know, good for her. But I think that they low key look at it like that's work for them or for whatever mother you're working with who has had to deal with a child that's lost their life to police brutality, right? Like whatever community you're working with that is being ravaged by some sort of white terrorism, et cetera, right? I feel like people look at it and they're like, oh, that's for them. Like, I feel like mm. black people Absolutely. will look at the work that you're doing and be like, that's for them. And not really wrap their heads around that this is a universal terror that is encroaching. And I don't think the alarm is there for folks. I genuinely mm -hmm. don't. And I'm not sure what the reason is because, like you said, like you've been woke since you came woke. out the womb into a cradle of wokeness. <laughs> before they right? called it woke. <laughs> yes, before they called it simply <laughs> just like, we like we're fighting for rights. That's like right. these are just rights. So my thing is. It was black power. That's what it there was. There we go. But I don't think we have black power in the same way anymore. Mm -mm. We don't. No. Would you agree or disagree? No, I don't think that. I think you are right that somewhere along the line, black power became synonymous with black financial success. And so, you know, as people begin to see more black millionaires, then they thought or figure, hey, we've made it. Um, and that's absolutely, it's not true. It couldn't be further from the truth. Right. Right. Because in all aspects of Black life, people are dealing with oppression. It might not look like bloodshed on your clothes, 
but it looks like being blocked from boardrooms. It looks like not being able to get banks, not being able to get insurance in a new community where you bought a home. It looks like being profiled on the streets. It looks like worrying about your children at every second because you're scared to even let them go like to the basketball court. Right. Um, you know, it looks like sports. It looks like so many issues, right? Um, and, and it plays out in so many different ways. And unfortunately, in more disadvantaged communities, it looks really bloody and violent. Uh, and so, you know, it, 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 the range is there, right? Um, and so, no, it doesn't mean that because it, it doesn't mean, it doesn't have the same power, that term, that Black power term lost some of its power as people began to believe that because a few of us have become executives and we we had a Black president, that it is no longer a fight that is universal and a fight that requires all of us to be in the game. It is not gonna get worse. It is getting worse. It is worse. In this particular time, it is at an all time, or what would I say? I, I would say it's an all time high, um, but it, it, it's, it's like a, the it's momentum. A, it feels like an all time, like the momentum feels more It's against supported. Us, put it that way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's against us. It's very blatant. It's very open. The strides that people have worked really hard uh, to make for us and for not just, and by the way, all the problems that Black folks have, I tell people all the time, it is not just us that suffer from, that suffers from the oppression and the racism and the sexism. It begins to spread to other communities. So whenever they target us, and target our communities, other people are impacted by it. So now we're talking about the right to choose and the healthcare system being a disaster. It's not just one group of people who suffer with that. What happens is that the, the system is so broken that maybe you're, you, you have a little bit of a better opportunity as a white woman, but now we're starting to see white women turning out to the streets even more than us around healthcare issues and the right to choose. So you think that allowing a racist, sexist, fascist society to exist is not your problem until they start taking away your rights as well. Because they don't just hate Black people. They hate women. They hate immigrants. They hate gays. They hate, they hate everybody. Difference. They hate dip. If you're not a white, a straight white man, you are under attack in America. Period. You know, I don't think it's that simple for a lot of folks. Like, I, I really, I, I've, I, I need to take a little break from the internet because it's driving me crazy. You know, because you start really realizing, like, oh, you mean this? Like, some people I feel like are just trolls, but then other people, it's like, oh, you really, you really mean this? Like, you really do think, well, we should vote for Trump. It's an option because Absolutely. no, and they're doing it. They're doing it. I have two friends that are literally fighting me regularly offline and online about how Trump, you know, it's not, it's not that one of them feels Trump is a, is a viable option for change. The other one feels that it doesn't matter. Like just stop. You need to just stop to make them. And it's really, and it's not just them. There are other people who don't talk about it. There are people who I know in my own family and friends that are less vocal than they have been in the past. And I know why it's because they don't want to expose themselves, but they are literally supportive of Trump and not just Trump, but Trump isms. Trump isms. It's very dangerous. By the way, I had a huge thing online with some brethren that felt that DeSantis was right about the education ban. The Black History Ban, because because he, because he mentioned, one line, yep, one line about about gay and trans people and that, that were involved in that are involved in <laughs> the so social justice movement have always been. Have you wouldn't been actually here. be you wouldn't be telling the history properly. So so history is not about, and this is the conversation that I've had to have. History is not about being comfortable. History is telling the story, regardless of 
who feels, likes it. It's like me trying to say, tell my story and say I'm being vulnerable. And then I leave out that I had an abortion, that my baby father, you know, and I got pregnant and had a miscarriage. I was 16 years old and then 17. Like, how can you, the, the story is what it is. If you're going to tell it, tell it. Well, so history is just, not about telling the feelings. History is just telling the facts. Like, it literally is just this happened, and then this happened, this caused this to happen. But we live in such an op-ed society now Ooh. where folks are very much editorializing every aspect of what takes place. When ultimately, it's like, there's an objective way to just simply share the facts. I mean, when I'm in school, I'm thinking back, like, when I was in school, and... I just always go back to like I had this teacher, Miss Lewis, who like did a whole unit on the Holocaust. And I feel like for what it's worth, she gave us a very just like clear, fact based understanding of what took place, which included photos that we needed to get a permission slip to, to you see, know, from our right. parents if we wanted to see them. Um, but which also just simply included like, yes. When Crystal Knox happened and they went and like bashed up all the Jewish businesses, I would be remiss to not include the fact that there were Germans who were like completely fine with this. Right. right. Like she right. Had, like that's just but in the version of things now, there would be somebody who would say, well, I, 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 why do you have you to can't, that? Yeah, don't you can't that. say that because that makes me uncomfortable to be German. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But yet the history of everything about us is told every day. And every time something happens, you get choked to death on a train. Now everybody knows about things that happened before the, the incident. Yes. You, yes. You, you know, you get you get shot on the street. We know about everything that you did from when you were two years old and you said your first word. But when it comes to America, and unfortunately, some of our own people want to be history revisionist and mm -hmm. they don't want to include or they want to change certain parts of it because it doesn't make them feel comfortable. So my position is that regardless of whether you like it, you cannot exclude gay people, trans people and folks of all different backgrounds. You can't exclude them from a historic perspective on our fight for justice and equal rights because they have been there and they are here today. And, and so therefore their story, just like we have been, and I've, I've said the story of black men and the power of black men, the leadership, the warrior spirit, all of that needs to be told. The power of black women needs to be told because oftentimes we are also left out of yep. the narrative, right? You would never know that there are queens in Africa who actually have to, they have to deputize any king from taking position. So you can't even, you can't become a king unless you go through a queen who says he's ready. You think, have, no one no one tells us that. You gotta go <laughs> I there. I know and, that. <laughs> Literally, that is the, that is the process. The queens, they are the ones, the elder mothers, they are right. the ones who say, yes, this king is ready to take position. If they do not approve of you, you do not become king. Now, that may not be the case all over the continent, right. but it is in many places because I went and I learned it, right? So, and you have to scrape that from the ground. So we had to have a tour guide that's into Black women liberation studies to tell that story because when I was in Egypt, you would have thought that th black that women had nothing to do. You know, we were basket involved. weaving. Nefertiti, that's it. Like you that's that's it. So we was at the banks of the Euphrates just washing clothes. <laughs> that's it. Exactly. So it depends on who's telling your story. <sighs> Tamika, I'm tired, right? <laughs> You are tired. I see I'm, it. You see it? Like, cause, because, you know, so I do the radio show. Um, we do Amanda Seals, we do the Amanda Seals show every day for uh, Reach Media Radio One. And because of doing the radio show, I, I have taken up the mantle that the show needs to consistently tell 
the facts and tell information that a lot of people are probably not getting on their Instagram feed. They're not getting it on their Twitter feed, right? Like, I feel like for the most part, people use social media more so for like gossip and fun than like an actual like information gathering space, right? So then I'm like, okay, well, we're going to do this on the radio show. But that means I got to know about everything all the time. Ooh, big thing, big job. And, and... When you're dealing with our people and you're trying to give them information, the the feedback can sometimes make you weary, like really weary, because it's like, bruh, like, or sis, what are you talking? Like you, this is a simple thing that you are making way complicated. And so it's like Harriet Tubman. It's like, we got to stop while we're on the road <laughs> We trying to get to freedom. Give us free. We mm-hmm. see the light. We're going towards it. And you over here like, well, I don't understand why we want to get free anyway. It's not that serious. My cousin, my cousin got a job. You know, my mama, we just want to work on our job. We in these fields. Massa's not that bad. Like, he's just not. Like, sometimes Massa get mad. But if we just get him his corn liquor... Everything will be fine. And you know what the problem is? It's you. You, you to me. Stirring up trouble. You hate men. Um, you, you, you hate men. You, you know, you just, you're a race baiter. I, I'm not talking about what they say. I'm talking about us, our people, what they oh, you stealing the money from the from the movement. Uh, I mean, it's just you'd be like, yo, bro, okay. Got it. And then what? And then what? Because Leaving people behind is a, is something that I struggle with. I, I struggle with that. I struggle with people this. People say it I, all the time. Mm-hmm, people say mm-hmm. all the time, you can't bring everybody with you. You know, everybody yeah, didn't make it on the arc, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like. <sighs> I struggle but, with it. But we have to try. Yeah. You know, no, I, I struggle with it. I struggle with how many of our people don't get it. Or, or, or. People who get it and they still, they have a fear yeah. of even you speaking out, right? Like they, it's not so much themselves, like they can hide and they're good. But I have, I have, I have friends and family members that will hit me up and say, Hey, especially one of the worst times in my life when I was like really going through some really, really serious stuff that you, you know, with you were there and others to see it happen to me. There were a lot of people who are close to us, close to me that hit me up and said, Hey, just do whatever they're telling you to do. Stop causing trouble. You know, you're doing so well. Look at you and you're going to lose everything because you just refuse. I mean, it's, you know, save yourself. You know how many times I've heard save yourself? Save you. Stop worrying about all these other people. Do you feel, though, that if you thought, because I feel like if you had that mindset, it would undermine the actual, like, purpose of your work. If you thought, I feel like if you were of the mindset of save myself all the time, then how does that, then when you do come back to the work, it's kind of like, okay, am I still, do I still have this purpose driven force? I I feel like it would feel, it wouldn't feel the same. Well, let me put it to you this way. Let's change the perspective. I am saving myself every single day that I get up and I hit the ground fighting for all of us, I'm included in that. I want to make sure (laughs) that when I'm driving, right, I'm not profiled and potentially shot to death. I want to make sure that the elected officials in my community care about my voice. I want to make sure that my son is safe. I want my father to have social security and health benefits and death benefits and all the things that, you know, my parents have worked for that it's not taken away from them here in their elderly years. I want to make sure that I can start a business and go get a loan just like anybody else. So everything that we fight for, everything we fight for, we are also included in it. And I think that goes back to your original question when you talked about how people feel it's over there. But when you look at injustice and you look at systemic oppression and all that we fight against as a whole pie, each one of us is on. We have a pin on the board somewhere. 
somewhere, right? Because it's oppressive to have to sit, I would imagine, just thinking about your life. It must be oppressive to sit in any position, a studio, you know, to be working on your acting career and feel like if you're not, if you don't be quiet, if you are not, um, if you don't go along, get along to go along, go along to get along, then you won't have the same opportunities, even though you know you have the talent. And just because you dare to say, hey, I don't like that, doesn't make me feel comfortable. I don't want to wear my hair this way. You know, I need a black oh, makeup wow. artist. Like, I how had to dare walk you? away from a contract for that. I literally had to walk away from a whole contract because they refused to allow me the right to choose my hair and makeup. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It seems simple. They were like, well, we we know how to do that. We have the expertise. No, you don't. You no, don't. you don't. So what are we talking about? No, you're right. I mean, that's I, that's actually a beautiful perspective because I think um, I think that's the kind of thing that that can bring folks back. Like I know that like in that short explanation, you just helped me kind of come back to just because when you're weary, you start thinking like, what is the what is the point again? <laughs> right. Every day. It happens to me every day. Just so I'm not exempt. I wake up, I tell people I want to throw away the baby, the bath water, the bathtub, the bathroom, and the house. Like, just, I don't want any of it. But then I have to center myself back in the idea that, hey, I have a child and I have a grandchild and they're walking the earth too. So when, every time we make it better, every time we you know, save or, or fight to save some part of our society, my granddaughter will be a beneficiary of my work, not somebody else's grandchild. It's not like my granddaughter is going to grow up in Mars. She's uh, literally right here. So she needs the same benefits. She needs to, she, I would like for her to go to school and, and, and have education that is uh, culturally competent. I don't want her to go to school and learn all white history and never learn about herself, even though they weren't really teaching you a damn thing before. But they're, they're at the point where they're going to whitewash it completely at this point. You know, so I'm not just, I am not, I cannot even, I, I have to frame me getting up every day around my own survival just as much as I do those people that I'm reaching out to. If I fight for people in Parchment Prison in Mississippi, which we did, and we were successful in getting changes in that prison, we listen, it might not be Parchment, but Pookie them in my family in Alabama, they're in prisons all over, all over the state of Alabama. I have cousins in prison. So if I can change something in Mississippi, then hopefully it trickles, right? I can't fight in every jail, but it hopefully it trickles. So it is very, it is still, I tell people all the time, this work is very selfish to me. I take it real, real personal. When you have a black son that's 24 years old, who I'm not speaking to at this very second, but I'll be speaking to him when I get off this podcast. <laughs> 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 he told me, you can't pick up Blair, my granddaughter, this Saturday because it's the weekend and you can't. I'm like, what are you talking about? Who are you talking to? So I'm, I'm not talking to you. But <laughs> come on um, back now. <laughs> come on back. But um, but you know, I I when you have a 24 year old black man who likes to party, who drives, who's you know living and shit, I want to know that he's okay. Where is so there's an election coming. A lot of the people I talk to are still on the, it doesn't matter. Mm. Elections don't matter. Mm. Voting doesn't matter. Mm. Where do you feel, uh, or do you feel like voting plays any role um, in the work that you are doing to make this, like you said, a better society? Amanda, I am unwilling to debate with anybody about voting. I'm, I, I, you know, some things you get to a place in your life where you'll argue, and you'll go back and forth, you do, you know, about certain things. But I am not, I will not debate that issue because everything in front of you, I'm doing like the Amanda Seals. Voila, can you see it? Can you see it? It is all in front of you, okay? It is here. Everything in front of us gives you a very clear perspective 
on why your vote counts. Everybody else knows that their vote counts when they want something. Some communities don't do it all the time, right? Like they, they may be, they may say, well, you know what? I don't care about this particular election, but when they care about issues, oh, they show up and they right. show up in numbers and they handle their business because at that point they recognize how it's directly linked to their survival. Perhaps some people don't understand that because civics is not a thing that they have taught us in school. Most families didn't know it. And in fact, they have a t they have intentionally not taught it to us so that right. we wouldn't be aware of the power that's in our hands. But you're complaining, let's go very local. Let's go very local. You're complaining about streetlights. You're complaining about grocery stores because perhaps you live in a food desert where there's no fresh food in your local community. Uh, in my community, the pharmacies have all closed. Walgreens, I guess oh, they wow. closed down. Yeah, and they, and they closed all the pharmacies. There's only one. The line can be an hour to two hours to go to get your oh, medication. Yeah, wow. That is a problem, right? Yes. And so when 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 I sit there and I say who to call, who do I call? I could try to call CVS and Walgreens all day and night. <laughs> that is actually not the answer. Like like maybe they'll do something, maybe they won't. But I can definitely demand that my elected official take whatever the city council and all those people. They need to be at the meetings. They need to be in those zoning conversations. They need to know in terms of contracts, who's bringing businesses in and out. What's where's the next right. pharmacy going to come from? Like that right. is their job. So if yep. I, I have to push you to do that. Well, guess what? That stretches all the way to the federal level. It goes all the way up. Somebody is responsible for every single thing that happens in your life. You have sex. It's political. It is very political, okay? How you get the proper contraception, political. Mm -hmm. Where you can go for care, political. Mm -hmm. Whether or not, whether or not you can even be in a relationship with another individual, depending on a bunch of different things. It's uh, political. Yeah. Your ed your children's education, political. Yeah. Uh, the roadways, political. Banks. Political. It's all political. Now, your pets, even your pets, wow. it's political. In it's LA, political. it's like, can you bring a dog here? You can't bring a dog here. You can't. Can you bring it? Like it. Like literally every aspect of your life. I'll give you your hair example. is political. Your, your like they had political. to pass the Crown Act because you can't even go to work with certain styles, right? It's political. I'll give you another example. Um, a shout out to my brother, Jay, Moore, uh, Jay Jordan, excuse me, and um, my son, the two of them are working together uh, on looking at coll collateral consequences of having a felony conviction, right? Mm. So if you have a felony conviction, there are 4,000, and I'm probably wrong about the numbers, excuse me, Jay and my son, y'all are better mm. at this than me, but I'm still trying, I'm trying. <laughs> but I think it's like 4,000 or 40,000, might be 40,000. Um, but regardless, if it's 400, it's too many um, different things that you can't do if you have a felony. So you can't be a barber. You can't even be, you can't a, be a barber. You cannot be a barber. You cannot get a barber license. Now, you can cut hair all day, I'm sure. But you cannot get a barber license in many states if you have a felony conviction. You cannot be a dog walker. OK, you cannot be. A dog, you cannot go get, you know, you see people in the movies, they got 10 dogs and they went, you cannot do that job. You cannot join the uh, the parent association at your child's school. You cannot oh, wow. volunteer in your child's school if you have a felony conviction. Oh, there wow. are many, as many of the collateral consequences. That's political because guess what? Jay um, and, and, and my son, they are working together right now to one, bring awareness uh, to this issue. Because like you said, people don't even know what's happening. But Jay, through his efforts, he's actually out there trying to get laws changed in states so that people can return to full citizenship. That is political. If you don't think that that's political, I don't know what to tell you. Well, baby, you know, Tamika, I don't think a lot of people understand that laws are created and changed. 
And I'm going to say this as I'm going to just keep it a buck with y'all. I feel like I myself was very ignorant to just the reality that like when you have state senators and you have state representatives, they are creating the laws of your state. And I don't think a lot of us really think about what laws actually mean because we think about crime. When Mm. a lot of people think about the word laws, they just think about crime. Mm. They just think about, oh, it's a crime to do such and such and such. They passed a law that it's a crime to do such and such and such. But the Mm. reality is that laws, to your point, are the determining factor of how you get to exist like in your world. And there are people who are put in position to make those laws. And when we watched Justin J. Pearson and uh, Representative, Representative Justin J. Pearson and Representative Jones in Tennessee, we watched the way that they were ousted for trying to enforce the people around them to make laws that are reflective of what the people that were standing there were saying they want. We understand like, oh, so there's a cause and effect to this. The children. No, 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 no. You said what the people want. Touche, touche. There were children. Literally. Literally. Protesting for their lives. Literally. After shooting, after shooting, after shooting, the kids are afraid and they are protesting to change the law and they had the audacity to throw these folks out of the (laughs) legislature and say, "You, you can't protest with the kids. And you telling me that it's not political? It's it's very political. So with that being said, though, there are people who have a very valid point and they are tired, they are frustrated, and they are righteously indignant at this point that I don't even know if I can, I, I don't, I don't know how to even care anymore, right? So they'll say, well, Joe Biden wasn't the answer. And by the way, you and I know. We're on, we, I have something to say about Joe Biden from the time I wake up in the morning to the time I go to bed. Sometimes I put it in public. Sometimes I write letters. Sometimes I call over there. I just came from over there meeting with them about Shanquella Robinson last week, telling them the administration completely messed this up. Like all, and not just the the administration, but the, the government. So let me say the government messed this up because of how you all neglected Shanquella Robinson. So I just, we do it every day. But what I do know is that we have to stop as a people being last minute engaged, right? We're engaged at the last minute. So I never wanted Joe Biden to be my president. I did not want that. There was (laughs) 9 million 350,225 million trillion people running for office in the uh in the in the um in the Primaries. primary. In the primary, there was there was they were all, all running. these people. Castro, Buttigieg, Bo- Bo- Harris, um, Marianne Williamson, who knows all about reparations. Um, Elizabeth Warren, who was my that yes. was my choice. Okay. Yep. Bernie yep. Sanders. Yeah. All these people were running. Y'all folks in South Carolina and other places had the opportunity to choose someone different and it didn't happen. Okay, so here we are. Now we've got two choices. I know, no, I don't want, it's not just, it's not, it, you know, let me be fair. It is not just President Biden that I have an issue with. I don't want any 70 plus year old white man nope. to be my president. I don't, I don't. want that. I, I don't. don't want it. I don't, I don't want a 70 year old white woman either. But, I, you know, my, again, my options. <laughs> was that's what I was dealing with. Right. So now we were we were put in a situation where we had to make very you have to make choices, because if you're not a part of this conversation, then when it's time for us to challenge, the reason why I can go to the White House right now and say, I, I was I was on them about Brittany Griner. We were a part of that fight nice. to get her released. Yeah. Now we're back for Shanquella Robinson. We were demanding that 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 the FBI file charges against the officers in, involved in Breonna Taylor's murder. All all of these things. I feel entitled. I roll up to Washington D.C. with my neck, like <laughs> because I'm a voter and I'm a donor. Right. I'm a donor and a voter. So I have things to say. I have expectations of the people that I hired to do a job. Now, the people that I don't hire, that I haven't been engaged with, and, I, and I'm and i not, I'm not, you know, in any way, I don't show up for them or I haven't shown up to put them in position. 
I'm a little more skeptical, not to say that I won't show up and talk my what I need to talk. Right. But it's not the same level of entitlement if you're not engaged. Then, OK, they say, well, I still don't like the choices. Fine. Then you got to run, sis. Then you got to be the one. Yeah. You have to be the change. You got to. And yes, it's Start hard. Oh, oh, it's hard. Nina Turner. It's hard. It's not easy. But you can do it. Yep. You can do it. Well, you all can come to Patreon to get these questions that we're about to ask Miss Tamika D. Mallory oh, before Lord. she heads on out. <laughs> Did you just groan? Are you oh, worried? <laughs> Is there another word we can use instead of woke? Can we use a different word such as enlightened? No. <laughs> just no. <laughs> Listen, they used to tell me all the time, all PR is good PR, even the bad stuff. Like you got to look at it that way. I don't know if I agree with that. I, I was going like to say, PR. I have a rough time with that one. <laughs> but but I do understand the concept that when people are talking, I know you're doing the round of questions, but I think this is an important uh, insert here. <laughs> the conversation around reparations to me is bigger than a check. Even though I think I want my chat. I agree. Cut my chat. I want my chat. Definitely. I need it. <laughs> There's literally 400 articles about me out this morning. It's seven o'clock. And there's 400 articles already with people copying and pasting these lies about me and plastering it all over the media. I mean... There it is. I I am fully aware that this is the kind of conversation that could happen for four hours. So now you know that when you do come to L.A., there will be a part two right here four hours. <laughs> on the couch. Because, you know, I think when a lot of people hear you speak, they just get reminded that whether we know what outcomes are coming or not, because we don't. Mm. It doesn't change the fact that we still have to be in motion towards the right thing. Keep pushing. And that's the Keep thing pushing. I think a lot of us end up re like forgetting and we need to get reminded of. And I wanted to have you on because I really think you're a beacon of light for people in that way. It's a reminder mm. that, okay, this is somebody who's dedicated their whole life to this every day i'm struggling to try and do this on the weekend right or you know there's people like I'm, I'm struggling trying to figure out how to fit this into my brain you know i know people who are like i just don't watch the news anymore i'm uh -huh. detached etc mm -hmm. and i'm like this, you know yeah. i used to say lucky you but i don't even say that sarcastically anymore i just say so are you moving because mm. you still here out of the world because you have to move from the whole world. Right. To like, ignore the, to ignore the you news. Got a, you got a ticket to Mars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have By to. By the way, they've been on there. Mars. So they, and that's they the already thing. politicized Mars. They already go, <laughs> exactly. So it's already a dollar amount on getting there. So that means it's political. So there's nowhere you can go. And I tell I, Amanda, you don't know the times that I tell people in conversation, like, listen, I hope you're paying attention. Because there's some real serious shit happening right now. Yes. And you cannot close your eyes and think it'll go away. It's not. And it's not going to fix itself. It's going to take like and, and the, it, it's, it's almost like it has to get worse because the, the, the worse it gets, the more you are forced out of your comfort zone and you have no choice but to wake up. I saw a tweet the other day where someone said, I feel like people aren't trying to change I feel like people aren't trying to change things. They're just trying to get rich enough to where the issues don't affect them. Ooh, but it still does. And that's the tea. It still does. They still look at the writers. Aren't y'all on strike? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. A very good friend of mine who is very wealthy, who is known could not get home insurance. That happened. I know could not thing. could not get home insurance. I mean, and ultimately when they got to the bottom of it, it was like, wait, what? what? Exactly. And it still boiled down to politics and it still boiled down to discrimination and it still boiled down to oppressive practices that they were able to continue to put in place. So, but I just always commend you for being you.
And you've been Thank the same you, motherfucker this whole time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it is always a pleasure. And thank you for giving us some time away from, you know, running up on uh, Biden and, and co and running to, the, running to these communities and creating co-ops and working with folks because I know that that's really the groundwork that you do. And I, I just, when I see the politicians on podcasts every other day, me and Jeremiah be like, how they got so much time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be everywhere but where we are. How? And that's where you be. You be where we are. So thank you that's as fine. always. Thank and uh, keep up the fight. I love you so much. Thank you so love much, you Amanda. Love you. Bye-bye, sweetie. Bye, babe.